Hi, my name is Enrique Mbasi. Today, I want to talk about how to get your prayers answered. I want you to stay tuned because I'm going to give you four principles that will help you to get your prayers answered. First, listen, you should always pray to get results. Unfortunately, many people pray, but they don't receive specific answers to their prayers. So I'm going to show you how to pray to get answers. I believe that once you know this, once you know how to get answers to your prayers, you will never be in need. You will never have to stay broke. You will never have to stay defeated. You will never have to stay sick for the days of your life. The first and most important step for getting answers to your prayers. First, find scriptures that definitely promise you the specific thing you are praying for. Yes, you have to find yourself a specific scripture that promised you what you believe in God for. You see, when people say that they are praying for something, you know, and... Um, I like to ask, what scripture or scriptures are you standing on in order to get what you're asking God? Often, people answer, well, uh, nothing in particular. Well, that's what they will get, nothing in particular. If you're not standing on any scripture, you will not get anything. Jesus says, if you remain in me, and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given you. John 15, verse 7. Now, I wanted to notice that Jesus began this promise with a little word called Eve. The word Eve is a little word with consequences. Yes. The word Eve means that this promise for answered prayer is conditional upon something. What is it if you, if you may ask? Jesus says that you can ask whatever you wish as long as my words remain in you. Child of God, you must have God's word abiding in you if you expect an answer to your prayer. Often Christians pray for something such as healing, yet we do not, or yet they don't have any promise from God abiding in them which guarantees that God will answer. God has made many promises to heal you. What you need to do is find those promises and meditate on them until they become real to you. Child of God, by doing this, you'll be able to fight doubt when your healing does not ma manifest immediately. You see, if you pray for healing and do not know God's promises to heal you, when symptoms persist, you begin to doubt that the answer is coming. Once you doubt the answer, is counseled. The book of James chapter number 1 verse 6 to 7 says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. It says, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. He says, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. See, God answers, God answers only believing prayer, not doubting prayer. Now, you might say, but if God doesn't heal us or heal me in response to my prayer, then maybe God doesn't want me to be healed. You might say, it may not be his will because I'm not seeing the healing immediately. The truth is, God's word is his will. If you want to know what God's will is, then look at his word. It's simple. He only promises things that he's willing to do. Since he has promised us healing, we can be assured that it is his will to heal us. Child of God, 
by not knowing his word, delays in answers may make us think that God is denying us the answers. But by knowing the word, delays are simply opportunities to stand on God's word in faith. Principle number two, ask and you shall receive. That's in Matthew chapter number seven, verse number seven. You must ask God for what you want and believe that you have received it. What is it that you want, if I may ask? You gotta be specific. When you ask God for something, you must be specific. Dr. Yonggi Cho or Dr. Cho, the pastor of the largest church, said that many years ago, when in South Korea, you know, yeah, many years ago when South Korea was poor, he said he asked God for a bicycle. Back then, a bicycle was a very big thing, was a big deal. Well, he said several months had passed, but he had not received the bicycle. So he finally asked the Lord, why is it taking so long for me to receive an answer to this prayer? The Lord answered, son, he didn't tell me what kind of bicycle you wanted. He didn't tell me. There are many different brands, uh, different colors, uh, different manufacturers. Um, you know, you gotta be specific, child of God. What kind of bicycle do you want? I think many people need to be specific in their request. Jesus asked a blind man, what do you want me to do for you? It would seem obvious that the man wanted his sight. But Jesus never assumes to know your desire. He wants you to tell him. Once you are specific in your request, you must believe that you have received the answer. Even before, you can see the answer. That is the key. Mark 11, 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, he said, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Please pay, pay attention. Notice that this scripture does not say to believe that you will receive. No, it says to believe that you have received. Now, this means that you must believe that you have the answer already. Even before you physically possess the answer. This is what we call faith. Many times, people are praying, thinking that they are believing, when in reality, they are not believing. But they are hoping. You see, hope and faith are not the same. You cannot expect to receive from hope what is promised only to faith. Faith is what is required in prayer. If you are praying and expecting that God will sometime in the future answer your prayer, then you are not believing, but you're hoping. Faith says that God has answered my prayer. The very moment that I pray. Hallelujah. So are you believing or are you hoping? I want you to begin to examine yourself. Are you actually believing or are you hoping? As long as you are waiting for tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. God says, believe that you have received today, today, today. The third step for getting your prayers answer is this thank God for the answer before you can see it now since you have already believed that God has answered your prayers the only logical step is to thank him in advance for the answer you know during this proves that you trust God's word you may ask how can I thank God for answering my prayer when I don't see the answer. When I don't see the answer yet. Here it is. Because he promised the answer. And that's good enough for you to thank him. Because he promised you the answer, that's enough for you to thank him. You thank him for the promise. Let me give you a scenario. Suppose a gentleman 
promised me that he was going to buy me a new shoes or a new suit for me next week. Would I say, hold on, sir, when you actually buy it, <laughs> buy it and I'm wearing it, then I'll be grateful and then I will thank you for it. I would immediately thank him for the new suit, even though I don't actually have it yet. You see, I thank him because I believe his word is good. I believe his word has integrity. The same is true of God. God promised to answer our prayers and his word and his promise is good enough to solicit gratitude, to provoke gratefulness from us. So after you have prayed and believe that you have received the answer, then thank God for the answer. Thank him for the answer. The fourth and the final step for answered prayer is this. Let every thought affirm that you have the answer to your prayer. Very important. Because whosoever controls your thoughts will control your emotions. See, it is this last step that many believers stumble over. They will do fine until this last step. Because many believers do not know how to fight the devil or Satan. Satan battles against the mind. Your mind is the arena where the battle is fought. Do not allow any negative thoughts to, don't even entertain any thoughts that enter your mind that is negative or that is not affirming or that is not convincing you that what you have been requesting from God will be delivered to you. The reason you need to keep your mind on positive things is because doubt begins in the mind. Doubt begins in the mind. And if you can and if you can keep it out of your mind, then you can keep it out of your heart. And if it's not in your heart as a man thinketh, so is the man. God bless you and I am so happy that God bless you. My name is Nick Bassi. See you next time.